Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be trying to achieve the ultimate in propeller design as well as provide you with a tutorial on how to achieve your own. So propellers are tricky. Uh, they're basically there to convert the rotational motion of the engine, uh, the crankshaft, and to go ahead and actually convert it into thrust. The way they convert it into thrust is if you actually look at the side of a propeller blade, uh, you'll realize that it is basically an airfoil. It's actually cutting into the air. And by cutting into the air, it's basically going to take that air and push it backwards, which of course is going to pull the aircraft forward. Now, the general rule with all propellers is we're trying to make them as large as we possibly can within whatever limitation we can have. Now, one of the cool things that we can do to check that real quick is if you actually click on your prop real fast, if we were to go ahead and increase the blade count here to four, I can see very clearly next to my front landing gear that we're pretty much at the upper limit of how big this propeller is going to be before we'll accidentally bottom out. What is this thing, a Mooney or something like that? But of course, there's other ways to approach this as well. Now, the next thing we need to be thinking about as we come up to this is basically how much power am I going to need to power or a certain size propeller. And as a general rule, the bigger the engine that you have, the bigger the propeller or the more blades that you're going to have. Uh, one of the calculations they actually do for this is calculate the actual size of the blade and then they work backwards. Now, speaking of blade sizes, you'll notice there's a wide variety of different blades available to us. As a matter of fact, if we go to blade type, you can see the different styles are right away. Now, each one of these different styles has a different sweet spot on the actual blade itself. This one, for example, you'll notice that the middle of the blade does all the work. Uh, when you switch to this one, you'll notice it's a little bit more even. When you switch to this one, it's a saber. This one's designed for very, very, very high speeds. Swinging to this one, in this one, you'll actually notice that it basically shifts the cord. This one's biased towards the tip. This one's biased towards the root. This one's for high speed. This one's kind of got that sort of generic feel. This one's actually pretty good. I like this one. And then of course we have this one, which is a little more conventional. This style was very popular with wooden propellers. Uh, generally, I like type one. Uh, a lot of people will do different types depending on what you're trying to achieve. But the nice thing here is that once we have this, we can now get kind of a baseline to understand exactly what kind of capability we have in our particular aircraft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, fire this up into the world. All right, here we are in the world. And uh, what we're doing now is we're just doing a standard kind of static test. And this is a great way to determine how your propellers will need to be sized. So right now I'm sitting here, I've got about 16. I've got about good temperature here. My RPM is, should be at, at close as possible to the engine's peak power. Uh, right now we're just sitting here at 16% throttle, uh, about 2.2 kilonewtons. Um, not terrible, not terrible. So if I kick this up to full power here, you can see we get a static RPM of about 2300 RPM. Uh, we also can see that we're getting 191 kilowatts out of it. If I open actually the engine itself, you'll see here we're producing about 198. So we're getting most of the performance out of it. There's something else we can observe, and this is very important. And you'll see here that our propeller, our alphas of our propeller for the root, the mid, and the tip are all equal to each other, which is going to be very, very common when you are at basically static. You're also going to be producing most of your thrust here. Now, 8.86 is actually very good. Uh, that's a really, really nice amount of thrust. Now, if I were to go ahead and remove the parking brake, one of the things you're going to observe is the propeller alphas are going to change. Now, the reason they're going to change, as a matter of fact, the root is now actually creating thrust in the opposite direction, is because now there's incoming air. And because our propeller blade itself is going to be moving at different speeds, depending on how far away you are from the root, it's going to have a dramatic impact on your performance. Uh, one thing we're observing here is uh, we're about 2,800 RPM, which is very close to our peak power. We'll go ahead and get airborne here. Ignore this goofiness. This is just a test bed kind of thing like that. But as soon as we get airborne, all of our thrust is basically gone. We're using every bit of power that we can. We're not quite getting up to our peak, which means we have a propeller blade that's either biting out too much or, and more likely, uh, we have a propeller blade that's a little bit too big for us, uh, depending on which we need to do. Thrust, uh, that's pretty fair. So we have some work to do. And the other problem we have to deal with is the silly alpha problem. Now, when you get into a propeller itself, you have to remember that different parts of the propeller blade are moving different speeds. Our tip, of course, is going as fast as it possibly can because it's the farthest from the rotation point. Our root here, which is on this side, is barely moving at all. That means that when this air starts smacking into this prop, uh, we need to keep that in mind that that air difference, the actual speed of it cutting through, is going to have to require our blade to be twisted in order to solve the problem. Now, everybody's like, so what is the twist of this blade got to be? I mean, it seems like that thing was moving pretty quick. You basically got to knock a degree or two off of it, and you should probably uh, more or less be optimum as far as takeoff thrust goes. So let's go ahead and set that real quickly. I think that's going to be a great go way. Now, one of the things you probably observed during takeoff is those three different alpha numbers. One, you probably observed that our alpha four or our root was very low, it was actually negative, our mid was okay, and then our tip was kind of average. So what if we took those alphas and punched them right into our blade twist? Let's do it. So that was about 15, I think that was about five, and I think that was about two. So now watch what happens. 
Now, if you observe, sitting here at idle, my alpha for my root is 23 degrees. It's taking a very large bite out of the air. But you're going to observe that my mid and my tip are actually still pretty twisted here. That's actually too much. Uh, we want probably between 5 and 10 degrees. Now, if I increase power dramatically here, uh, you'll see here that we come up. That's a lot of thrust. That is a, that's impressive. I'm actually amazed. Notice here, by the way, we're not achieving peak RPM at all. Now let's go ahead and kill the parking brake here and get this thing rolling down the runway. Now look what happens. You'll notice that our root, our mid, and our tip are almost perfectly matched with each other. But you're probably also observing that we're still not making takeoff power here. Uh, we're generating a pretty good amount of power. As a matter of fact, we could probably get airborne on that much power, which is pretty impressive if you think about it. But you're also noticing as our speed progressively increases, um, our RPM slowly starts to increase, but our alpha and our root is starting to mess with us. That's right, your root is what's going to always give you that extra little bit of drag and suck that last bit of power out of it the faster you go. As a matter of fact, the faster you go, the more dramatic of an impact you're going to have based on the twist of our propeller. We can see here if we were designing this aircraft for, uh, let's call that about 70 knots, we would need quite a bit more twist on the root, a little tiny bit more twist on the mid, and a little tiny bit more twist on the tip. So you can see exactly how that works. But the good news is that we can take that information and we can actually employ it right away. So that would be plus 10, that would be plus 3, and that would be plus 2. 10, 3, 2. So we can come right back here. We can add 10, we can add 3, we can add 2. Delightful. Let's go give it a shot. You can now see that at static, um, it seems we're really, 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 really bad. Watch what happens as we start to pick up some speed. Let's go. There it is. Delightful. Now our, our, you can see very clearly that as we're ripping down this runway, all of our angle of attacks almost perfectly balanced for that speed. Uh, there's a much bigger problem that we're facing at the moment, but uh, we'll deal with that in a moment. Go ahead and get ourselves airborne here. Again, we're not going to have a ton of thrust to play with, but you can see here we're doing great. Um, we have a really good amount of thrust. Um, we're actually producing, everything's almost perfectly balanced. Our incidence is only about 7 degrees, uh, so we're almost literally perfect. We could actually twist the root just a tiny bit more and get more performance. But there is a really big problem here, and that's the fact that my propeller RPM indicates that my engine is not even producing three quarters of its maximum power here, which is actually very disappointing. That also means that my Mach, which is going to be getting a ton of things, obviously uh, power speed is going to be the square root here, the square of rather. Um, you can see that we're barely turning this prop. And you'll notice as we get even faster here, that root tends to be even more problematic for us. Now, one of the things I mounted on this little airplane is I actually threw on a turbine engine. Now, the reason I put the turbine engine on there, it might seem a little silly, but what it does is it allows me to achieve a much, much higher speed than I would be able to achieve with the propeller because of how little power I have here. Now, as the thrust starts to pick up, you're going to see that my problem with the root is going to get progressively worse just because of how much air is rushing into this propeller right now. Yes, we're showing an increase in speed, but notice the problem is not as bad as it was a few moments ago. The other thing you'll probably observe is as we pick up speed, we're going to start getting closer and closer to actually producing our um, takeoff power, which is that lovely 2800 RPM. So there's a lot of little problems we have here. So what do we do? Uh, two big things. The first thing we could do, of course, is we could gear the engine. Uh, we could basically allow it to rev really fast and let our propeller turn a little bit slower. The second thing we do, could do, of course, is add more power. The third thing, which is the dangerous thing, is adjusting our cord. You can see our current cord is 0.7. And the final thing we can do, of course, is we can reduce the fixed pitch angle. Now, if we take that fixed pitch angle and reduce it, we're only half solving the problem here. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go down to two degrees and now watch what happens. You can see here at static power, we do indeed almost get up to our 2800 RPM. And the other thing you'll probably observe too is that our alphas are coming down quite nicely. And we're actually getting very, very close to being able to hit that sweet spot of the power that we need. And we actually got a good amount of thrust. So we've actually done a really, really nice job here. We're actually almost to take off power. So I hate to say it, but we basically almost have a perfectly sized propeller for if we were doing a twin engine option here. So there's our power right there, about 2,800 RPM. That was optimum. Go ahead and I'll bring that up a little bit. That looks pretty good. Our angle of attacks on our different parts of the propeller are basically perfect. We have created a really solid propeller here. This is almost perfect. But one of the things you'll observe, of course, is um, it's not a very strong propeller. Um, we're not producing uh, all the thrust in the world right now. And the previous problem, as I was mentioning, where, um, of course, once you start getting to the higher speeds, our efficiencies will start to feed off uh, relatively quickly as well. 
we'll go ahead and let our little jet engine pusher here kind of get us going. Compressor temperature's coming up. Combustor temperature's only to 1,000. Pressure's coming up. There we go. Five or six. There we go. 1,000 newtons. And now we have a new problem. Our propeller is overspeeding. It's overspeeding so terribly right now that we're actually getting close to Mach 1. And you can say goodbye to all that lovely thrust. So the good news is uh, one of the things they did to solve these problems is they made what they call constant speed propellers. Now, a constant speed propeller is actually three different modes here. One mode is basically going to stay at a constant RPM, which is fantastic because I can click that and set it to 2800. Now watch what happens when we take off now. Now you can see here very clearly that at static power, we're producing a ton of thrust and we're actually at this little tiny one degree pitch. Now, if I release my parking brake here, you'll notice that the 2800 RPM is actually very, very challenging to reach. And you'll actually see here that my pitch is remaining very, very, very fine. Again, going to the fact that that initial twist of that propeller is pretty good. Now, the advantage we now have here, and this is a huge advantage, is when we start to cross 2800 RPM, what's gonna start to happen is our propeller itself is going to actually bite more of the air, which is going to improve our efficiency. You can see we're just barely getting airborne here. That's kind of typical with designs like this. So you can see here, whoa, we're holding at about 2,800 RPM. We've got good efficiency. Our alphas are basically perfect. And we're kind of chugging along here, uh, doing about 63 knots. I would not exactly call that fast. Now, if I were to come in here and uh, reactivate our little jet engine to kind of give us that little honey, little tiny little push, what you're probably going to observe here is, again, look at how much power we're sucking out of the thing. The propeller pitch is actually going to slowly increase here. But there's a new problem that we're going to have to face. Of course, you're saying, if you reduce that wing a little bit, this thing will go a lot faster. But what you want to observe here is our thrust here that's slowly reducing as we pick up speed. Typical. You also notice that we need to twist the propeller more aggressively once we get it to about 84 knots. And the other thing you're going to observe is my Mach speed now, as we're starting to feed a lot more air through the propeller, is getting up towards 0.87. Um, that's actually not good. Because as we uh, showed you before, uh, once that crosses into 0 0.9, everything tends to turn a little red on us, and it's going to give us a bit of a warning to that effect. It's like, uh, just so you know, you're starting to get a little fast there. You can potentially do some real damage to the propeller, and you also have a big drop in efficiency. The next type of uh, constant speed module we actually have here is we can actually set this to be a Mach number. Now, this is cool, because I can come in here and say 85. Now, if you do that, watch what happens. What you'll observe here during our takeoff is that we're still producing plenty of thrust, but notice just how incredibly low our RPM is here. The thing uh, works almost too aggressively to try to keep our Mach at a safe number here. Uh, really, all of our thrust and performance right now is coming from the little jet engine kind of helping us out. So unfortunately, that little Mach requires a lot of tweaking on our part. Otherwise, what you'll have to do is actually set the incidents kind of by hand so that it prevents this basically from uh, running away on you like you're starting to see right here. Go ahead and just engage the parking brake. The other thing we observed too is notice my alpha's all messed up because my RPM is so darn low. The constant um, mock does work really, really well if you have like a turbo prop or something like that. But as you can see in this particular case, ah, it just doesn't do much for us. The final method, of course, is what they call the centrifugal. Now, this is an old school, and I'm actually a little disappointed here because we don't actually see the little weights for the centrifugal here, which is kind of a bummer. But um, the nice thing there is it's really straightforward because we can set the minimum and maximum range. Like, we can set a living minimum of 15. That's a pretty good. We can even adjust how much it is. And, of course, you'll see here when you do the little one is it's basically controlling the response. And that's going to be a little weird. Let me show you. You'll see here at that low level of response, the propeller blades are cutting so thickly with the pitch here, it's basically preventing us from getting more than 1600 RPM on this thing, which is a little abysmal. Now, if we were to go back on that, go back to our propeller and uh, say our power and say one instead, you'll observe it actually made it worse. So if you are going to be using the centrifugal method, um, of course, the power particular response here is it has to be substantially higher. So now if I wanted to have some fun with this, of course, I could do something really absurd like that. But 100 just means 100% of it. So if I were to do 50 and head back over, you'll see that it has no difficulty at all, basically uh, running up to our full power here. It's clearly, there were about 2,500, 2,600, which is actually pretty darn good. Now, this is doing a nice job. And one of the neat things you can actually see here is the pitch of the propeller is slowly starting to crank itself up. But um, you can see even 50 is just not enough. Um, that's basically not going to go well for us because in a moment we're going to start over revving again. And we can actually watch that Mach Max slowly start to creep up again. So if you're looking for kind of the all catch all answer here, generally you're going to be using target RPM for items that are going to be relatively uh, lower speed and probably not turbo prop. You're probably going to be using the, uh, like I said, the constant Mach method for other reasons. So as you can see, there's a lot to propellers. And of course, if we wanted to be a little bit more precise about this, we did have some tools that we showed you last time. 
One of these twos, of course, is over here at Desmos, which allows us to set our angular speed that we want. That's gonna be our basically degrees. You can pick the size of the prop here. You can dial in the velocity of the plane in meters a second, desired RPM, and it'll actually project this. Uh, this actually tells us that we would need to have a, what is this, a 75, 76 degree uh, root. We'd need about a 15 degree core, and we'd need about a, it's basically a zero degree on that far side. Now, one thing I always like to use is I'm a huge fan of 75, 15, zero. That just seems to work pretty well for me as far as, I'm sorry, not 75, 45. This seems to be a pretty good matching if you're looking for just a generic setting that you can utilize. Now, what you're probably saying is, hey, okay, I'm starting to get this. I like this. I kind of get how you have to size and sort of the process. You basically need to optimize it for specific speeds. What's going to happen if you increase the power of your engine, though? Um, what's an easy way to deal with that? Well, let's grab our engine real quickly here. So right now, our engine's producing about 163 kilowatts, which is not terrible. Let's go ahead and open up those valves a little bit here. So that's going to crank us up to about 199. But it's also going to increase, as you can observe here, it um, substantially increases the propeller, not I'm sorry, the peak power point to up here at 3,400 RPM. Now, this isn't a problem for us at all. And the reason why is because we can just gear it. Now, if we pull out our calculator real quickly here, let's see, uh, 3,385 divided by, uh, what do we say, 2,800? So we know we need a gear ratio of about 1.2. Now, watch how easy this is. We can come right over here, click right there, and we can just set our gear ratio just like that. So now, of course, our engine will turn faster, and then our propeller will turn a little bit slower. Now that we're sitting here, you can see we're picking up quite a bit of speed here and things accelerating fast. The other thing you'll observe here, if I put my propeller at piston engine controls next to my propeller, you'll see that uh, because of the way that our constant speed is basically run our way on us here, give a few moments to kind of get caught up. Uh, we'll actually use our jet engine too, why not? There we go. And you can start to see that as the engine starts to get up towards that uh, sweet spot where it's at peak horsepower, you'll see that, that because of the gearbox, I'm actually spinning very, very close to the speed that I needed to basically hit my target RPM. Uh, the reason we're not hitting our target RPM, by the way, is if you probably looked at that torque curve really carefully, you'll notice that my overall torque has also changed. Yes, the power comes on later, but that also means I need to be closer to that RPM to produce my peak everything. Now, the interesting thing here is uh, we're doing okay, actually. We're doing about 100 knots. And that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Uh, we definitely need to tweak our prop a bit. You can see my tip is actually working against me right now because my root is doing so much of the work. And that was just like we showed you earlier when we are optimizing that propeller for that purpose. 109 is okay. I think we can do better. I think we can do better. So let's go ahead and take our engine and uh, let's go ahead and uh, crank this thing up to 11, so to speak. I'm going to take the compression ratio. I'm going to put it up to 8.5. Uh, that's a really substantial increase in power there. So if you go to the performance curve, you can see we're about uh, 226, which isn't too bad. Let's throw on a turbocharger, because why not? Uh, let's see, make it a 2.0 pressure ratio. That's going to be plenty. Uh, we'll also go ahead and take the manifold pressure max and put that to 2.0 as well. Of course, if we do that, we need uh, intercoolers and things like that, so we don't mess anything. I think this one's actually connected to the engine. Yeah, it's a radiator. We'll be okay. So if I take a look at the power now, uh, let's see what that did to us here. Yeek! Uh, that's uh, 4,351 RPM. <laughs> oh, boy. Bust out the calculator, 4351 divided by, uh, what do we say, 2,800? is what we built our prop for 1.55 to 1 oh, that's that that's oof, that's that's quite the gearbox so let's go in here and put this at 1.55 and see what happens oh boy that's uh that that's different that's different so one thing we can see right away is even though we have that much more slamming into that engine right now observe the fact that the propeller blade itself uh, it's not a substantial change if I go to my engine here, I can actually put these side by side so you can kind of see what's going on here. You can see my propeller power is slowly making its way down because we're actually going way beyond there. So even though we're at a pretty good spot there, it goes to starting to climb a little bit and get a little more power here. You can also see just how high my boost is. Of course, so one of the downsides to working with turbochargers is now I have to rebalance everything based on the turbocharger. But you can still see how we're basically taking advantage of that so power change there, which is, like I said, pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. To back the power up just a little bit so you can see my pitch here is basically just chilling and now we're bouncing off the uh, virtual red line here because i did my math incorrectly oh, but that's uh, something that i've done about a million times how did i get my math so wrong let's see what i did here what did i do four three five three but we never got out but somewhere in here ah, i'm not going to worry about it too much the fact of the matter is that it works pretty well for our particular purposes here now, sometimes, you, of course, you're sitting there saying, well, I didn't really design an aircraft that has a little tiny, maybe you have six or 700 horsepower or something like that. Maybe you've got something, oh, hello. Uh, what if we have something that's a lot bigger? 
Well, the philosophy is going to be exactly identical, but uh, one thing that we have at our disposal, of course, is uh, once we start scaling things up to really, really, really large sizes, is we now have the ability to do two props at the same time. Now, it is totally possible to take one of these off and, of course, uh, put on basically an eight-bladed scimitar prop, which would probably be optimum for this. But what I actually ended up doing is um, I not only did I gear it, but you can see all my blade twists and stuff like that build right in. Now, this thing is a little loud. Now, what you're going to observe here is the twist of the blade is such that it actually at kind of this idle here that everything is massively into the red here. When I take a look, I'm already producing 30,000 units of across. Now, when I actually kick this thing up to take off power, it's going to take off the part right here. You'll see that this thing goes pretty quick. It actually peaks at about 600,000 uh, total. Remember, there are actually two blades for each one of these. And uh, you can see that this thing takes no time at all. Now, uh, this thing weighs hundreds of tons, just, just like that to give you an idea, but you also probably observe how fast that thrust bleeds out on you. You can see uh, now that I've gotten myself airborne, obviously there's a lot of missing details here. You can see just how limited propellers are because as you go faster, even if you have the world's most perfectly balanced blade with the correct size and the correct incidence and everything else, you're gonna have a really tough time getting all that extra thrust out of things because that's just the problem with propellers. Like I said, if I wanted to redo this, I'd probably do it with scimitar props to be a little bit more effective. But if you want to ever see something a little excessive, nothing quite like a 275,000 pound bomber that can rip down the runway like a fighter jet because of the fact that it has all of these massive chip Enjoy.